Happy Friday, everybody. Today's Friday, July 10th. Welcome to this week's video update. Hope everybody had a great week of trading. We're going to talk about the alerts from the week. We'll talk about our current positions in the portfolio. Uh, I will give you an update on the day trading stuff. And then uh, but to start with, let's just talk about the markets for a minute. So we're looking at a chart of SPX. And it's been kind of a crazy week. Um, and as you can see here, I'm on the year to date uh, percentage here. So S&Ps are only down 2% on the year, year to date since January 1st. Uh, here's, here's the sixth. So here is Monday. Had a big up day on Monday. Tuesday, big down day. Then a big up day. Then a big down day and came back and then was down again and then up again. So just a real back and forth kind of week and some pretty sizable moves, uh, but really didn't go anywhere, right? I mean, ended up for the for the week, uh, but pretty pretty narrow range with some massive swings. So that's kind of the kind of been the name of the game here. Um, you know, I, I, I think, I mean, the way this thing is looking, it's setting up. I mean, it you know, we had this last week was a huge rally. Now it's just kind of bouncing around. I look for this thing in the near term to, to head higher. You know, initially I thought, especially after we had this break here, I thought we were going to bounce around and then potentially head lower. But uh, I think in the short term we are going to, to head higher. Um, and now, does that mean we change our strategy within our portfolio? No. I mean, this thing could certainly roll over and die, uh, die a slow, painful death. You never know what's going to happen. We're still still carrying short delta, but we're we're only about one to one. We're a little bit less than one to one on our short delta versus our theta. So we'll still keep adding iron ducks, adding weekly double calendars, you know, selling premium, you know, implied volatility is still nice and elevated. I mean, if you look at the IV percentile, we're talking, it was still in the 60s, still at 63. So good, still some rich premium out there to sell. Still, obviously, still some uncertainty with the options being elevated the way that they are. So that is what we'll continue to do. Uh, but we're not going to you know, we're not going to add any new short delta right away. So if this thing does, in fact, push higher, break up to new highs, you know, at that point, then we might start layering in some additional bunkers and things like that. But for now, we're just going to we're not going to we're not going to get long by any means, but we're not going to we're not going to get overly short either. And I, so I like our position where we are, where we're structured with just some just some, uh, uh, you know, just a little bit of short delta, but not overly short and just continuing to add some of these shorter duration, doing a lot more defined risk spreads and, and letting this thing play out. So that is the plan. Let's go to the alerts, starting with Monday the 6th. Our first alert was a rolling adjusting trade in ZB. So we had a short strangle. It's inverted, adjusted, we got down to 18 days to expiration. So we just rolled out to the next expiration to extend duration, collected a nice credit to do so. So if we go to the platform and take a look, oh wait, this is actually a one of my personal accounts. Actually, before we jump into that, I, I do, this isn't part of the alerts portfolio, but I do want to, I, I want to show you guys something. Let me, let me zoom this out. So I want to show you what I'm doing with this portfolio and I, I'm doing it just to kind of test and I'll, I'll, I'll prepare more details for, for you, the pro members, uh, just so you can kind of understand what's going on. But basically back in early February, so it was, it was kind of before the whole Corona crash happened, I funded a new account and I said, okay, with this account, I just want to test this because I, I kind of went through the metrics and data and calculated kind of what this would look like. And I said, okay, what if I just did bunkers and iron ducks and weekly double calendars? And that, and that was it. And I had very, you know, some specific criteria that I was going to follow. Well, if you remember at this point, we were we were adding in some VIX bunkers, and we all for those of you who were who were part of this when this happened, you know we had these VIX bunkers, and they based on the term structure of the VIX, they just they did not give us the the downside or the benefit from this downside flush that we were hoping for, and so uh, so I I put money in this account, and you know at about this point the the account was down like. 15, 20, maybe, maybe even more, 15 or 20%. And so 
I, I got rid of the VIX bunkers. You know, we redid that whole situation with the new with the new bunkers that we that we use today using regular indices. And so I when we got this little bounce here, I added those those new bunkers back in. And obviously with this flush down, those worked really well. And so, and then I added another, well, I'll tell you, I initially added a hundred thousand dollars to this account. Then I, and then I put another hundred thousand in. So I, so I've put in a total of 200 and, and so that, that, that's not important. What I want to, what I want to share with you now is, you know, so we, we had that big flush and then always, and then obviously we've had this massive rally that we're seeing here. Uh, and, and by doing primarily just, I've, I've, I've done a few other little things here and there, like I've. I bought some puts for some short-term protection and I've done some other things, but primarily it's just iron ducks, uh, some weekly double calendars and bunkers for downside protection. Now the account is up over 20% uh, today, as of today, it's up over 20%. um, And so in the last, what is that? Four or five months. So I did hundred, then I added another hundred some somewhere in March. Uh, so we're at 200 and, and it's, it's over 240. So we're up 20%, uh, to date. So, you know, whatever that is, uh, I'm not sure what that would be annualized at this point, but, um, uh, so anyway, that, that's where we're at. So if we look at, if I go to like SPX, for example, we'll just show you like, I mean, how many, how many, well, let's go to the trade tab. What, you know, we teach the iron duck and we, teach, you know, you can put these on anywhere from one to 21 days to expiration. So if you look in every single cycle, I have iron ducks. I've got it. I did some with just one day to expiration. Now, most of these I'm putting on with 21 days to expiration, but they're obviously getting closer and closer to expiration. So that's where you see I have iron ducks in every single cycle between now and 21 days to expiration. So you see, you know, I've, I think I posted this one in the community. Uh, this was with uh, three contracts and obviously Beak Profit there. Uh, that that one expired today. I just put that one on yesterday. Uh, you know, in the 13th, I've got a duck with one contract, two. Uh, I've got some other, some, a couple calendars in here. Uh, but as you can see, I've got a lot of iron ducks here, just in SPX uh, that that I'm that I'm working here. And then we've got let me just go to the monitor tab. Then we've got uh, bunkers. So I've got bunkers in DIA, IWM, QQQ, and SPY. And these are just I'm just using these for the bunkers, and I'm just kind of spreading these out over different durations. Uh, I've got iron ducks in SPX. I've got a reverse duck in shop. I, I was going to put this out as an actual alert, but the the liquidity is just so thin that I didn't I didn't want a bunch of people jumping in that when it's it's not very liquid. But that's a reverse duck just with the uh, with the skew. And then uh, some double double calendars. I've been doing those in um, in NDX, and so that's what I've been doing. And and so I, I point this out for one reason. I didn't even mean to talk about this. This wasn't part of the plan. But uh, I get a lot of questions, especially from newer members, who say, "Which strategies should I focus on first? Right? And I and I think I think this is a great way to really start building a portfolio is focusing on iron ducks weekly double calendars and bunkers. You get, you get the bunkers in there for that downside protection. And, and it's been doing really, really well. And I'll, I'll, I'll update you guys as this kind of goes on. I haven't really even mentioned it, but cause I just wanted to kind of see how it was playing out and, and all that good stuff. But, uh, but that's all we're doing it. You know, like I said, I got a couple long puts and, Oh, I, I'm letting the cat out of the bag here. Vertigo. This is uh, that's the, that's what I'm calling uh, one of our newest strategies that I'm testing. So after the day trading stuff comes out, our next uh, strategy course that we're doing is going to be called the strategy is going to be called Vertigo. Another one of my beautiful naming conventions. You guys will love it though. This thing is it's pretty awesome. So can't wait to share that with you as well. But I uh, just want to kind of give you that little tidbit on what's going on there. So. Okay, so here is ZB, and price is hanging out here in the upper end of the range. If you look at just the untested side, the put still got a lot of juice, a lot of premium in those options, so not looking to roll those up or out yet. We've got still 42 days left in that cycle, so just playing the waiting game. Hopefully, we can get a little bit of downside action in bonds. 
you would have thought with kind of the, the way the, the stock market's acting, we would have got a little bit more downside action in bonds, but not so much. They are, they're staying pretty bid, so we'll just continue to manage that. Next trade, SPX did a opening trade. We added a, a weekly double calendar in, um, in SPX that expired today on Friday. So we already had one. So this was the second one that we added. I'll get to the closing of those here in just a second. Uh, in SPY, did a it did an iron duck. So let's, we did that one with 10 days to expiration. So let's go to SPY. Uh, here's an iron condor that we still have on. And then the, the duck that we just put on is this one here. So this expires 718. Uh, so you can see price with the up move today. It's up in the beak a little bit, but still a decent uh, chance that it could possibly get back down to the duck head. So we will take that off by next week. Remember, an SPY, I mean, if this thing runs up the beak, and we'll take it off early and just book beak profit, if we're getting close to expiration and there's a chance it could expire in between these strikes, then we'll definitely close it out instead of letting it expire or between these strikes. Uh, you know, that's, that's when you can get a sign. So we won't want to mess with that, but hopefully we get a little bit of downside, get into the duck head. We'll see what happens. Next trade, IWM rolling adjusting trade. Uh, this, so this is one of our long put verticals. We were over 50% of max profit on one of those down days in IWM. And so we went ahead and just rolled that out, kept the short Delta in our portfolio. So let's take a look at IWM. So here is a, here's one of the, just, let's just go through all the IWM. So here's one of the bunkers we have, need some downside action to benefit that. We've got another bunker in IWM. We're up a little bit on this one. I'm hoping to get some down movement. We really want to be out of this like late next week or early the following week. Uh, so hopefully we can get a little bit of a flush down and book a profit on that one. Uh, but we'll see what happens there. Either way, we'll be out of that one within the next couple weeks. And then here is one of our long put verticals. Price is hanging out right here, pretty close to where we had rolled it. And then this one right here, uh, looks like price is right there on the hash, right there on the break even point. So just holding these for that downside, uh, downside uh, potential protection. Next trade, rolling adjusting trade in NG, Natty Gas. So we had a uh, short strangle in Nat Gas, which had been adjusted into a straddle. Uh, went ahead and rolled this out, kept the strikes exactly the same. So we've still got the 1.9 straddle. So let's take a look at that. Uh, it was pretty centered when we rolled it. So we were able to uh, book a nice piece on that. Still getting, still working our way back to profits uh, in this, in this trade overall, but, uh, that one helped a lot. Now we're still pretty centered. We're up about $192 since we rolled it. So just waiting for some more time to pass they did decay and, and hopefully we can get back to profits here pretty quick in our natty gas strangle. Next trade, opening adjusting trade in GC in gold. So we had one iron condor. We added another iron condor in the next cycle. Uh, at that point, our, our other one had 21 days. This one that we added had 50 days to expiration. So if we take a look at both of those, I was actually, I actually had an order in to get out of this one, right around 40% of max profit, and it just never quite got there. We just need a tiny, tiny little more down tick in gold, and we will we'll book 40% uh, of max profit on that piece. And then the one that we just added here, we're up about 40 bucks since we did that trade. Uh, just waiting for some more time to pass on that one. Next trade, rut. Did, a, did an iron duck in rut. Uh, just as another symbol, I mentioned, you know, rut is just 10 times the size of IWM. So you can always do IWM on this if you want to stay smaller. And so let's take a look at our rut iron duck. Now we put this one on pretty close to the, uh, to the open on that morning. And if you remember, let's go to the chart. So let's see, we put it on, what day was that? On the 9th. So we put that on the, on the 9th, which was this day here. Oh, yeah. So we put this on right at the beginning of the day. And what happened? Well, this thing just tanked. I got a couple of questions in the community like, hey, why are your deltas at like the 50 and instead of the 65? And, you know, that can, well, it was because this thing just flushed so quickly. So for those of you who waited and didn't get in right when we did, you got a much better entry somewhere, somewhere down here, hopefully. So. Um, but of course then today 
had a big rebound in the Russell, and so now we're basically right back to where we started in the beak a little bit, not much profit or loss, and so we're just holding this, and this one uh, expires on the 25th. So we've got, at this point, 14 days left until that one expires. And we'll continue to do this. I want to continue to, I really like the, the portfolio that I was showing you guys with a lot of ducks, a lot of wild uh, weekly double calendars and some bunkers for the downside protection and then mixing in some iron condor short strangle. So, so that's kind of where we're building this portfolio. I think, I think we, by doing that, we're going to be taking a lot less risk than we actually were previously. Uh, we're going to be having more defined risk and we can have, you know, be using less capital and be more profitable. So obviously that's the goal, right? We want to take as little risk as possible and make as much profit as possible. And so that's, that's where we're going. And, you know, I mean, you know, I've been trading for 20 years now and still continue to learn new stuff all the time. And so, you know, I get, sometimes I get, I get members jump in and they, they feel like they should know stuff after watching a few videos and watching the courses once and just understand, I mean, this trading is a journey and, and you start to just you just start to notice different things and learn different things and how different things can affect other things. And, and so it's just kind of that market awareness and trading awareness over time. And so, you know, I, I, I think you guys know, I've, I've never thought of myself as a know-it-all uh, when it comes to anything. In, in, in fact, in trading, even though I've been doing it for 20 years, still continue to learn every day. And that's the, that's the cool thing about trading. Keep you on your toes, keep you sharp. Um, okay, next trade, closing trade in SPX. So this is one of our weekly double calendars. So this one, uh, these were these were a little interesting, kind of frustrating this week. Um, if we go to SPX, let's go to let's go back to the charts real quick. So remember, we had a couple of these on, and we all, and what we've been doing lately is have a try to have a couple on at different price levels, and then we'll take off one on Thursday with one day to expiration. We'll take off one on Friday with zero days to expiration or the last trading day. And so this one, you know, I mean, on this day here on Thursday, when, you know, the market opened up pretty flat and it just shot down, I mean, that, that made implied volatility spike, right? Like it normally does. And then, and I didn't, I didn't want to take that off because, or excuse me, I, I, I wanted to take the one off because A, when price was way down here, uh, it was getting somewhat near to the break even. So I didn't want to wake up the next day and, you know, stocks open way down here and then take a, a, a big loss on it. And so we wanted to kind of stick with the program, take one off, reduce exposure. So we booked a little bit of a profit on that one. And and then obviously what happened when when stocks when stocks ran back higher is man, I mean it really just crushed implied volatility. And then of course today the continuation of that rally uh, just continue to crush implied volatility. So we got out at one for, I can't remember what we booked, I think like 55 bucks. And then the the one we took off today, we booked $225. So, you know, I mean, the $225, that's still a 30% return on capital. Although, um, you know, obviously we would love to book more, but uh, we booked two profits on both of them, one small, one decent. And, uh, you know, that's just, you just, you never know what the market's going to do. You got to take what the market gives you. You know, a couple of weeks, we took off one uh, for over $1,300 in profit. So, you know, it's just, it just depends on what volatility does. Those things are so volatility sensitive uh, that you've just got to kind of play the probabilities, put them on, take them off, take what you get and just rinse and repeat. So that's what we're doing there. Uh, next one, This so this was the one we took off this morning, booked almost 30% return on capital on that one. And so we were out of both of those, did that first thing in the morning. And then uh, today, Friday, we also put on another one. And in the next cycle, did this one with seven days in the front week and 10 days in the back. So let's take a look at that one. And got a, got a late day push. I mean, the S&P is up 39. They were kind of just hanging around, you know, down on the day and then kind of just hanging around and then late day just rallied. Uh, the market closed about 40 minutes ago. Uh, so here's this one. So obviously we put this on. Price was more centered, and this uh, this sag in the in the chart was more like up here. But with the late day rally, we also got some additional volatility contraction, and so uh, price is hanging out right here, up about 
20 bucks since we put it on this morning, but um, just going to wait till next week. This expires next Friday. And with price already moving, I mean, especially if price moves higher on Monday, we'll add on another one of these centered and have a couple. I'd like to have a couple uh, exposures. I did get a question from, I think it was Suresh in the, in the community, like, why, why are we putting on two? And, and, you know, we want, we want the exposure. I mean, these are only costing us, you know, in this case, 800 and some dollars for one. Um, and so, you know, we want, we want more exposure than that, but instead of putting this on with two contracts right here, uh, at one price level, we will put one on, wait a day or two, let price move around a little bit and put on another one. So we're hitting at different price levels, different volatility levels. And then we have that, uh, both of those exposure. Now, one thing he mentioned, and I, 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 I guess I can't remember, or I wasn't paying attention to the buying cow, uh, capital required on Tastyworks, but, and I forgot to check, but it sounds like maybe Tastyworks is requiring more than the debit paid in buying power. Is that true? Uh, if I could get confirmation from Suresh or, or somebody, I meant to, I meant to follow up on that. Uh, but in toss, uh, I mean, you know, we're, you know, we paid 800 and some dollars for this and that's all the buying power it's required. So it's, it's pretty minimal. I mean, you're just paying the, the debit, uh, that, it, that it's requiring. So not sure what that's about with some of these other brokers or maybe it was E-Trade. I can't remember. Um, anyway, hopefully we get that figured out. Let me know if, uh, you have more information on that, uh, so I can pass that along to other members as well. All right, back to the alerts. Rolling and so last one, rolling adjusting trade in QQQ. So we had one of our short call verticals. Price kind of moved way out of range. Plus, there's only seven days left. So we went ahead and just rolled this out, adjusted the strikes accordingly, and to keep that short delta exposure. So let's take a look at the QQQs. We've still got two sets of short call verticals. Here's the one that we just rolled. And then the other one is still in July. So only seven days left. So we'll, we'll be rolling this out next week. Hopefully, we get a little bit of a down move uh, before we do so. And then uh, while we're on QQQ, we do have a bunker here. Price is hanging out right here. Just looking for some downside action to benefit that. So let's take a look at some of our other positions, starting with ES. Uh, we've got a long put vertical. This one's only got seven days to the left ex expiration as well. So we'll be rolling that one out next week. And then this one uh, has already been rolled out. Still price is out of range. So need a little bit of downside action to get back into range there. I mentioned gold, I mentioned natty gas, I mentioned bonds, Apple. Uh, I've got this long put vertical here. Price is just outside range, looking for some downside to get back into range on Apple. Same with DE. Now the market's closed, so don't pay attention to this PL line. That's that's not correct, but we're just outside of the range here on John Deere, so need some downside action to benefit that one. DIA, we've got two sets of short call verticals. Both of them are out in August. This one's just outside of the range, and this one is just inside the range. I mentioned IWM, mentioned the Qs, mentioned RUT, SMH. So we've got this adjusted short strangle. Price is hanging out outside of the, the range here, but remember, after we've adjusted, just because it goes near the break even doesn't mean anything. We're really looking at how much value is left in that untested side. And as you can see, we got a lot of premium still left in those puts. So not looking to roll that up yet. Uh, plus we are in August with 42 days. So a lot of time left there. I mentioned SPX, I mentioned SPY, XBI. We've got this short strangle, which has been adjusted into a straddle. And so price is hanging out right here. Uh, so just playing the waiting game in that. That is out in August, so we've got plenty of time there. And then lastly, XLK. This one is also in July, and so we'll be rolling this out to August next week. Again, just another, just another short delta piece. So those are all the trades. Those are all the alerts. All right, let's jump into the day trading stuff. Give you guys a little recap of what's going on. Uh, if you want to follow along on a daily basis, we post at the end of the day, we kind of post what our, what our profit or losses with a little bit of commentary in the Facebook group. So just go to Facebook. You can join the group. It's, uh, just go to Facebook and search for day trading options for income or search for navigation trading. You'll find it. Uh, and you can join that and kind of follow along. That's where we're going to be doing a lot of the posting and stuff until we, we roll this thing out and beyond. Uh, so what we do? What we do? We're up uh, a little over twenty seven hundred bucks for the week. So let's break that down. Uh, on Monday, Monday was our our worst day. Ended up losing a little over twelve hundred. 
big loser in Shopify. That was kind of the one one that I let get away from me. And I was trading fairly fairly conservative, fairly small size, but just let that one get away. Should have cut that one a lot sooner. I'm getting a lot better at cutting losses quicker and kind of letting the letting the winners run a little bit better. Like BA, for example, only a twenty dollar loss, and and so that one was cut, uh, to, which would have ter- ended up turning into a bigger loser. So uh, that was good there. Um, let's see. Um, next day, next day, four eighty four. So on this one, I um, I I posted in the Facebook group. This was a, actually a pretty frustrating day. I I couple well one excuse if I. <laughs> I don't like to make excuses, but one excuse is I, w- I had to be on this conference call. So I was kind of like watching, listening to this conference call and trying to trade at the same time. But what happened was, and I think sometimes some, some people will have this uh, kind of emotional reaction when they, when they are, when they're trading the strategy too, is, you know, every trading is, is really driven by fear and greed, right? You guys have heard me talk about this before, where either you're, uh, you're doing things out of greed for making money, or you're or you're not doing things, or you're doing things out of fear of losing money, right? And so, uh, on this day, for whatever reason, I don't, I really, uh, you know, I'm trying to really pay attention to my emotions and how I'm feeling while I'm trading because I think it's very helpful, specifically for this day trading. You'll find out. Um, and what I what I did this day for whatever reason, I just I kind of froze, like I didn't, like I missed several thousand dollars worth of worth of opportunity that I just I, I was looking at it and I thought that is a great setup I should get in here and for whatever reason I was like a deer in the headlights and just didn't get in but anyway I, I don't want to belabor that but you know booked 484 so I was just kind of frustrated I just shut down my platform and and then realized I never got a screenshot but uh that was that was the seventh okay on seven eight I started doing some additional testing uh, a, I'd been doing all this day trading on Tastyworks, so I wanted to just do it on Toss a little bit as well. And at the same time, I wanted to test out some of the the pairs trading, the intraday pairs trading that uh, that we'll be that we'll be doing as well. And so, um, so that's why I, I I just put it all on here because it's on multiple platforms. So we've got did a pairs trade in the Nasdaq Dow, booked a couple hundred bucks on that. And then um, did several day, uh, uh, pairs trades on NQ and the Russell, so NASDAQ Russell. So booked a nice profit between those. And then these, these were not uh, pairs trades. So this is the mini ES and that's the mini Dow, which uh, we're going to be, they're very liquid. And, and so these are, these futures are one tenth the size of the normal E mini futures. So you've got the E mini S&P. Uh, which which is fifty bucks a point for every point the S and P moves, you either make or lose fifty dollars. Well, the mini, my, or excuse me, the micro uh, ES is one tenth that size. So for every point the the S and P moves, you make or lose five bucks. So very manageable, especially for smaller accounts. And they're going to be great trading tools for uh, for this day trading strategy as well. Uh, one because they don't when you trade futures, there's no uh, pattern day trading restriction. So that's only on stocks, which it's only on equities, which includes stocks and stock options. But on futures, uh, you can trade as much as you want. Uh, it's it's just a totally different governing body. It doesn't make much sense of why they let you trade futures, which are super leveraged, uh, and they restrict you on trading stocks if your account's under twenty five grand. So don't ask me why that is. It's 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 just a stupid rule for that FINRA made up. But um, so anyway, so these were uh, the the ES and the YM. These two here, these were not pairs trades. These were individual trades uh, that we were just testing on the strategy. So I booked a little bit of profit on those and then took a couple trade, just a couple trades in stocks. Cause I wasn't, I wasn't watching them as much cause I was, I was, I was messing with these more, uh, testing, uh, but took a couple trades in Microsoft and Baidu ended up booking a nice, uh, overall profit on the day, a little over 2,200 next day. Uh, Oh, going back. So I mentioned this in the Facebook group, but so I was doing this on toss. I was trading on Tastyworks, and then I also placed these couple trades in the new uh, navigation trading platform that we're that we're coming out with. So this is something that we're working with a group, um, I'll, and and 
please don't ask questions because this is, this is a little ways away. We're still working on it, uh, but we're, we're, we're helping customize and develop a, a platform. Uh, the cool thing about it is it's going to be completely customized uh, to exactly the way that we trade. Uh, initially, we're going to roll it out specifically just for the day trading because it's, uh, well, a couple things. One, uh, zero commissions on stocks, zero commissions on options. So that alone is pretty awesome. Uh, and I've, I've noticed how much I've racked up in commissions, even on Tastyworks with this day trading, because that you are trading so much that uh, commissions are definitely a big factor. They're, they're a factor in, in our normal trading as well, but even more so on these uh, short intraday trades. So uh, good stuff. So uh, just all, of, all I can really say about it right now is uh, zero stocks commissions, zero options commissions, which is awesome. And then it, it will be able to customize it for exactly what we want to do here. So what I was saying is we're going to initially roll it out just for the day trading because of the ease of use and the, and the commission structure. And then next we'll be rolling it out to be able to be used, uh, for all of our strategies. And we'll have some cool, pretty cool stuff where the, our trade alerts will actually, as soon as we place them, they'll just pop up. If, if you're trading on this platform, it'll just pop up in the platform and you can just click on it and send it to, uh, to place the trade as well. So that'll make that a lot easier, even easier than copying and pasting into thinkorswim. And we'll also have all of our kind of proprietary strategies built in. So if you want to trade an iron duck, you can just click on iron duck and it automatically populates. And then you can kind of, you know, tweak the, tweak the strikes to make it fit, uh, depending on your time frame and all that kind of stuff. Uh, we'll have, you know, the weekly double calendar built in. So you can automatically just click on the drop down, populate it and, and boom, trade it. So it's going to be pretty awesome. It, like I said, it is Things with software always take a lot longer, so I'm not putting any kind of time frame on it. Uh, so please don't ask when it's coming. I don't know yet. Uh, these, you know, we were supposed to roll out our membership site, our new membership site, in November of last year, and that ended up taking months longer than expected. And so, you know, for something like this, uh, with a you know a trading software, it's it's there's a lot of coding and, and custom stuff going on. So, uh, pretty excited about it. But uh, it's going to be a little while. But I just want to kind of give you a heads up on, on spe specifically because I'm I'm sh I'm talking about how we're testing on it. So I just wanted to give you a little bit more detail. Uh, but that's coming soon. Um, and uh, one other question I did get in the community that I can confirm is it will be available for international, not just U.S. accounts as well. So that should be music to a lot of our Canadian friends as well as uh, overseas folks. So. That's what I know on that. Uh, next day, seven nine. So did a did a nice pairs trade in the in the Dow uh, Dow and Nasdaq. Booked a little under seven hundred bucks on that one, and a few trades in Baba, Microsoft, Nvidia. Booked trades in there. Uh, I'm trying to I'm trying to come up with, you know, going forward. I want to. I haven't completely decided because I want to incorporate some of these pairs trades along with our uh, other day trading strategies, but really just trying to define, because one of the questions I keep getting was, well, how much capital did you use, right? How much, which is important, I understand. How much capital, capital did you use to get these results? Well, you know, on this one, I was doing one contract in NQ, one contract in YM. So whatever your broker you know, needs for, for buying power requirements. That's what that was. So, you know, 4,000 per, I think maybe 5,000 per. So somewhere between eight and 10,000, uh, to, to do this. Now you could have done the minis, which is a 10th of that. So the, uh, the movement is a 10th, the buying power requirements is a 10th. So, you know, if you're doing the minis, you could have done one contract and did that for 800 to a thousand dollars. Um, so, so that's, that would be the capital I use there. And then on these, uh, that's what I'm really trying to define on the options trades is how much capital do I want to use per trade? Although I, I do like to fluctuate that a bit and, but more importantly, what's the max amount of capital that I'll use on any one day. Right. And so like on this day, let's say I was using eight to 10 on this, then I was out of that. And so on these, I probably only used a max of. I can't remember if I was in all three of these at the same time or at separate times, but let's say I was in all three at the same time. I, I, I wouldn't have been using more than 5,000 in capital, maybe. So pretty, you know, fairly minimal. 
All right. Uh, and then lastly, today, I was, I was even trading even smaller. I don't think I used, you know, as, as you can see here, I was just trading on Tastyworks and I was trading the minis, the micros. And so did a pairs trade here, ended up losing like 30 bucks on that one. Did a, uh, just a, a straight uh, mini micro futures trade on that one, booked a tiny profit. Uh, and then the, the normal options trades here. So today I didn't have on, I didn't use any more than, oh, I mean, these things are, you know, I'm, I'm moving, I'm getting in and out of trade. So I'm not always looking exactly how much buying power I'm using. I'm obviously have an account sizable enough that I'm not, I'm not pushing up against any limits. And so I'm trading pretty minimal for the account size that I have. So I'm not paying attention to that. And it's, and I'm getting in and out of trade. So it's hard to say how much I was using at any one time. But um, if I had to, if I had to uh, kind of guess, I would, I would probably be using only around two or 3000 at any one time on all these trades. So um, pretty minimal, of course, you know, today wasn't a Today wasn't a knock it out of the park day either, just but but it was a little bit of a green day. So that's where we're at on all of those. So total for the week, like I said, a little over twenty seven hundred bucks. So not too shabby for a week's trading. Now the other thing, it was uh, you know I was it was pretty distracting when I was trying to trade on Toss and Tastyworks and the other platform, which I would not advise for anybody. Two is pretty manageable. You know, a lot of times I'm trading on Toss and Tastyworks all the time, so I'm used to that. Adding a third one in, that was a little, that was a little too much. And so, as you can see, the next couple of days, I kind of held off on that. Um, anyway, that is the day trading recap. Uh, August 6th is when we're going to be doing the class. I, I mentioned this on one of our Trade Hacker updates. Uh, I think it's going to be at four o'clock central time. We'll be, once we get all the details put together, we'll get the link for you can sign up to attend the class, save your spot, all that good stuff. Uh, but it's probably going to be around four o'clock PM central standard time, uh, on August 6th. So if you want to save the date, uh, go ahead and do that. And that's, that's the plan. Um, the other thing I, I haven't really decided yet on what we're going to do as far as, um, as far as streaming goes, uh, it, you know, it's, it's a pretty big commitment for me to make sure that I'm streaming, you know, 830 AM to 10 AM every single day. I mean, uh, you know, I'm going to have to have somebody else being able to run it. I mean, if I'm, if I'm on vacation for a week, you know, I'm not going to be able to be in the room. So, you know, we got to figure out what, what we're going to do there. Uh, so I haven't decided exactly what we're going to do as far, you know, we can't send out the day trade alerts like we do our current ones. It's just, it moves too fast. You know, by the time you get a text message or an email or it's posted, um, you know, it's, it could be too late. So these have to be, we're going to be doing some streaming. So we, so you can watch live. We'll be calling out the trades, that kind of thing, but we haven't determined exactly what that's going to look like or how we're going to, how we're going to structure that because, you know, the one thing about trading that I love, especially specifically the way that we trade is the freedom. And, you know, if, 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 if I'm committing to the live streaming every morning, I have to be my, in front of my computer. Now, most of the time I am anyway, but there are times when I'm not going to be able to during that specific time period. So I've got to, I've got to figure out what I can commit to. I don't want to commit to something and then have to back out or, you know, whatever. So we'll figure that out, but just know the, the class is coming. So we'll get that into your hands. We'll, we'll we will be doing some, some live streaming, uh, around that after the class, but the class is August 6th. So look for that. We'll be sending out emails, post on social media, make sure you're following us. Uh, and then obviously in the Facebook group, uh, you can follow us. That's where we're kind of updating everything on the day trading stuff. If you're interested. So that's all I got for you. Everybody have a great weekend. Have a fantastic, safe time. Recharge the batteries. Look forward to Monday. See you then.